Live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, my name is Lauren Cooney and welcome back to theCUBE. Today we're actually at uh, down in Mountain View at DevNet Connect where we're talking to folks about cloud, DevOps, things along those lines, and, and really what developers are looking for in today's environment. Today I'm here with Kurt, and we're going to talk something, a, a little bit about what Kurt is doing and why he's here and what's going on in your world. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is, uh, you know, being at a DevNet Create uh, where IoT is sort of the major backdrop is a, is a change of pace for us and something that we're very excited about to get involved in. Great. So what, you're here for IoT. What are you really looking at within IoT? What is, what is interesting to you? Well, so I'm, I work with Sonatype and our, our sort of passion and what we bring to the world um, of, of in, you know, IT in general is software supply chains. We, we saw a gap in uh, a virtually unlimited supply of open source components that are being used to develop modern solutions. And we've been helping our enterprise uh, customers solve this problem for a while, and it now occurs to us that it's just going to explode and get much bigger with IoT. And all the types um, of devices. And it's all the same problems, and it's the same mm -hmm. sorts of things that we need to think about uh, as as a traditional IT, if you will, traditional Great. applications. So what's an example of a customer that you would help with regards to your solution and with IoT? So it would be generally a large enterprise um, that's looking to put some governance around what's flowing into their organization in terms of these free components, libraries, utilities, that are, that are being packaged together and delivered. Um, in the world of IoT, what's interesting is we need to be very, we also need to be very careful about what we put in there for possible uh, exploits, and we need to be thinking about how are we going to keep them patched and updated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a saying at Sonatype that software ages like milk and not like wine. So um, it's generally just a matter of time before components start to ha uh, show their age and uh, suffer from known exploit patterns. And, and so we're going to need to get in front of that problem and make sure we're thinking about it as we start to develop you know, the millions and billions of devices that are going to start to proliferate throughout our lives. Exactly, and so how do you decide kind of what open source you support or what devices you support inside of that supply chain? Yeah, so we're focused on it. So we're looking at just the open source, right? So it's not the proprietary stuff, it's not the commercial stuff. So we're watching like the 60 million GitHub repositories and we're watching a million events a day trigger and we're just looking uh, through the forums and through the commit logs and a variety of others, you know, like a thousand plus other sources and correlating all that data uh, into something that's very specific um, and actionable so that our customers can ultimately make an informed decision about what they're using, right? So half of the battle of managing risk is simply being aware oh, of definitely. what you've got. Um, it, it, the goal is not necessarily to be perfectly clean, but to have really good awareness of, of, of where your weaknesses are so that you can sort of uh, prepare or brace yourself against it or put up other mitigating controls. Great, and so do you guys provide a dashboard, for example, for a compliance team inside of a company? Well, what we, pr what we provide is a fully automated solution that embeds throughout your uh, software delivery lifecycle. Mm -hmm. Um, it's designed for the modern world. It's designed to be very precise so you can automate against it. And that's where traditional tools fall down. They were sort of built for a waterfall era where people could take days to go mm -hmm. through an approval process. We feel it needs to be done in a matter of minutes so it fits in a modern pipeline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we provide that intelligence feed and then we're tied into your build and delivery process and then it does surface, it, it can break the pipeline and surfaces as a dashboard report where you can drill into the details and then you know, figure out what you got to do to move forward. Great, and that tracks licenses and things along those yeah, lines licenses as well. Yeah, licenses is sort of the original concern of open mm -hmm. source. It uh, is. It's been overshadowed by re more recent security concerns, but licensing is a very important part too if you want to protect mm -hmm. your IP you need to be careful about what you're putting in these devices. Oh, by far. Now, I was looking at your LinkedIn a little bit earlier, and you have a lot of experience with DevOps and actually driving DevOps environments, tooling, things along those lines. What, what is, tell us about that. Yeah, um, yeah, so I started getting involved in DevOps sort of when it was very first a word, uh, if you will. I, I literally rebranded my team, uh, the DevOps team, and it was meant to provoke conversations. Um, it was fairly effective at that, but I did develop a high trust team. I actually was able to implement uh, the cultural part of that within my team. I couldn't change the whole uh, 
Fortune 100 insurance company, but we could demonstrate the art of the possible. Uh, it, was a, it was an awesome ride. I was also inviting security to the table long before DevSecOps uh, came on the scene because I, I intuitively understand it was holistic and we needed to get everybody involved. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, I'd like to think I was a little bit ahead of the curve there and had an opportunity to do some great work with some great people that um, continues to serve me well to this day as, this, as uh, we as an industry mature into it. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's really interesting. I remember going into a large customer and you know, we were talking about kind of a solution for this customer and at one end of the table was the infrastructure yeah. developers, the other end of the table was the app developers and in the middle sat the tooling guys. Right. Right, and so it was always interesting to see how they kind of flocked to their different sides and when they started working together how, you know, a couple people would sit together and they, they morphed a bit, and I think that's yeah. really interesting in terms of the culture element. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what my team was. We were that tooling team, but we acted as the, the team that was bridging those relationships and bringing those teams together. The middleware team in particular, along with our development team. Ops was a little bit further down the line, but also getting security and audit involved, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's an, it was an interesting role. Um, and it's it's just neat to see that we're maturing as an or, as a is an industry, and this is starting to become very real. And the tooling now exists to make this stuff um, very doable. Unlike five years ago, you know, there just wasn't quite the tooling there. Conceptually, mm -hmm. we knew what we wanted to do, but um, until the tooling shows up, it's hard to really automate it and do it the way you want. So, what kind of tooling is exciting you right now? What are you seeing out there? Just you know. So what excites me is. Uh, uh, in addition to our own product, which is a, in a family of products that I would uh, say is automated inspection, mm -hmm. right? And so gone are the days of late life cycle, uh, you know, heavy lift manual inspections. Mm -hmm. And uh, here today, now we have an ability to inspect continuously early in the process, you know, in that CI pipeline where things are happening 10 times a day. Mm -hmm. We can get that feedback to those the delivery teams when it's most timely. Um, and then so you combine that with um, containerization, at least in the regular application space, which gives us a converged supply chain. So now my OS, my middleware, everything is flowing through that pipeline, as opposed to when I was doing it, I was taking the application and ultimately deploying it to a statically provisioned environment. No two of which of those environments ever look quite the same. Uh, now with containers, that problem sort of goes away, and we have all this inspection tooling that helps us build quality in and not try to inspect it in later. Exactly, and just, you know, one of the things I'm looking at when I look at supply chain, you know, the question comes to mind around blockchain. And are you looking at blockchain as something you might integrate into your solutions at some point in time? I'm personally not looking at it yet, but it's hard to imagine that I won't be looking at it soon because you, I can't read three articles and one of them not be about blockchain these days. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems to hold a lot of promise in terms of provenance and uh, you know, basically chain of custody type things, which are also important to this whole supply chain issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, there, I think it has a future. Um, I think I've got a few things on my plate I need to get off first, and then I'll have to start looking at blockchain. That's, that's great. Now, uh, is there anything um, that was really wowing you from the show? I mean, we've got, there's Meraki here, they're giving away something like $1.2 million of equipment. Um, you know, what, were you surprised to see anything, or really, you know, outside of just IoT, what are you really yeah, seeing well, pop? Yeah, you know, like I said, this is a bit, this is a bit of a new venue for me. I've been attending DevOps days and DevOps Enterprise mm -hmm. Summit and local meetups, and I've been really narrowly focused in that space. And this last year or so, now I'm getting more into the cloud, and this is my first IoT-based event. Uh, it's great to see Cisco in their second year having such a successful mm -hmm. event. It's really grown a lot. Yeah. It's in a ter terrific venue. Um, but in terms of wowing me, I, I think it's just access for me personally to the folks in the IoT community so that I can start to wrap my head around it and share our story with them, which I think has uh, raised some eyebrows and got some interest to think about supply chain issues in, in mm -hmm. that context. Well, I think it's absolutely necessary that you actually enable this software across the enterprise. I know that my experience in many enterprise organizations would have been a lot easier if I had had your software and the ability to do that. Yeah. You know, I think that's I think that's great. So, um, you know, one of my other questions is: Are you guys are you partnering with DevNet? Or is there a relationship there? Or is this just educational for you? No, we definitely we have a relationship with Cisco, and we like to support events like this. Um, it helps us get out. It helps us build these types of relationships. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, I think this is a, an emerging relationship between Cisco and Sona type, and, and obviously IoT has such a big future. Um, there's a lot of potential there for, for both Great. parties, I think. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank oh, you so much for, for sharing everything that you did. And we will be right back from Cisco DevNet 